Video games are one of the most consumed forms of entertainment worldwide. From your phones, to your consoles, to your computers, they are literally everywhere. Starting out as lines on a screen with cinder block controllers to the iconic releases of Super Mario, Halo, and Minecraft, with many more, generating billions of dollars, let's go over key insane moments throughout the last 65 years of history. This is literally the first video game. Released in 1958, Tennis for Two was just supposed to be three days of temporary entertainment for visitors at a lab exhibit. Created by William Higginbotham, or however you say his last name, was an American physicist that, by the way, also helped create the first atomic bomb. So it can be said that video games and the most destructive device on Earth have a weird connection to each other. Tennis for Two was played on a combination of an analog computer and an audio scope for display. Showing the side view of a tennis court using big metal controllers, players could hit the ball back and forth. According to William, the high schoolers liked it the best. You couldn't pull them away from it. Foreshadowing the ridiculous potential of video games. Heading into the 1960s, it was an incredibly interesting decade, as technology wasn't as widely available to the public as today. Much of the equipment used to develop video games, like these massive computers called the PDP-1, were mainly only available in labs and universities. One of these GigaChat computers cost $120,000 USD, meaning when you factor in inflation, that's over a million dollars for a computer. Which is why only 53 were ever sold. Only a niche amount of people were working on video games, but somehow it still led to one of the most impactful moments, the release of Space War. A relatively simple game where you and another player would fight each other in spaceships while avoiding the gravity of a star in the middle. The most important thing Space War did was inspire future generations, as it was one of the first games widely spread between these million dollar computers, showing the possibilities of what can be done, directly leading to the first commercial video games being made. Come on in, it's almost another world here in the video arcades of America. Going into the 1970s, the first publicly available video game games came in the form of arcades, as around this time it was a very popular form of entertainment, especially with the youth, initially just being electrical mechanical games such as air hockey, pinball, and many more. The first digital game was Computer Space in 1971, heavily inspired by Space War, literally when you compare the two they look really similar to each other. This of course was a big deal being the first of its kind, leading to a golden era from the 70s to the 80s of arcade games you may recognize, such as Pong by Atari becoming incredibly successful successful, Space Invaders, Pac-Man, Donkey Kong, the list goes on and on. But unfortunately, the ridiculous momentum of arcade games were thrown out the window with a new convenient form. Who's that Pokemon? Simultaneously while the arcade market was booming, the Magnavox Odyssey released in 1972 being the first ever home console. Odyssey. <laughs> The electronic game of the future. A combination between a bunch of board games and 28 video games. Putting plastic see-through films on two PVs, using dice, cards of images, the Magnavox Odyssey was an interesting combination between digital and physical items. This led to a video game frenzy in the 70s where consoles and games were coming out the woodwork as everyone wanted to capitalize on the growing market. I'll be looking at the electronic game craze. The Atari 2600, hands down being the king from the late 70s until the early 80s in North America allowed a lot of arcade games to be played from the comfort of your home. Activision was also founded in 1979, publishing absolutely iconic 2D console games with never before seen gameplay and controls at the time. Home consoles killed the arcade industry as convenience is king, choosing between playing from the comfort of your home or going out to the store to pay for games. It's pretty clear to see what people would choose, just like if you joined the video, you should subscribe for good luck. The emergence of handheld consoles played a huge role like Nintendo's Game & Watch series, according to designer Gunapai Yokai, was inspired by a businessman he saw playing with a calculator. So the Game & Watch featured LCD screens, pretty mind-boggling stuff at the time, releasing over 62 different versions over the decades. Yes, you heard that right, as most of these handheld devices could only run one game, so you had to buy a lot of them. This was Nintendo's first worldwide success. The future was looking bright for games, an industry worth billions of dollars globally by the 1980s. But suddenly, everything crashed. Earnings for the industry peaked at $3 billion 
Only two years later, sales plummeted to a paltry 100 million. Going into the 1980s, North American stores were filled with horrible games. As a bunch of companies saw Activision's success with developing titles for Atari such as Kaboom and Pitfall and many more, they wanted a quick cash grab. As back in the day, anyone could make video games. There was no filter to remove trash rooting consumers trust with games as people didn't know what was good or bad you couldn't go on youtube and just pull up gameplay it was definitely a different time so reputation was incredibly important one of the main culprits that nearly destroyed the video game industry single-handedly was et for atari arguably the worst game of all time rushed releasing six months after the movie poorly designed was meant to be massive based on one of the greatest films ever and having over 22 million dollars invested into it back in the day if you factor in inflation that's big money making it one of the most expensive video game flops of all time this demolished atari never really recovering let me know in the comments if any of you knew they released a new system in 2021 Arguably, the release of the NES in the United States in 1985 saved gaming. As Japan didn't really feel the effects of the game crash, they filled the gap Atari left. The latest video game craze to sweep the United States and Japan, it's called Nintendo. The NES was very advanced for its time, having 8-bit graphics, better colors, and of course, the games were immaculate. From the release of Super Mario 1, 2, and 3, solidified him as the mascot, The Legend of Zelda, Metroid, these were all banger next-level games leading to Nintendo slash Japan's dominance of the video game market. And to make sure a crash would never happen again, NES games had a special chip enabling them to work in the system, which limited random games from ruining their reputation, allowing Nintendo to control what was played on their console. They were dominating uncontested, until Sega released the Genesis in 1989, beating the NES with 16 big graphics and their breakout game of their mascot, Sonic the Hedgehog in 1991. It's funny how Sonic's blue and Mario's red, I wonder if that was done on purpose. This sparked the console war we still see going on today. Following that came the SNES, a 16-bit system releasing in 1991. Comparing it to the NES, you can see how much more advancement and detail it brought. Simultaneously, while this console war was going on, a new era was on the rise. Similar to how home consoles dominated arcades, the rise of home computers were posing a similar threat. Gaining popularity rapidly in the 1990s, computers had a major advantages over consoles. 3D graphics, and online access allowing for multiplayer games. This led to the rise in first-person shooters, massively multiplayer, and real-time strategy games, such as Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, that both popularized the FPS genre, Ultima Online, EverQuest for MMOs, and Warcraft slash Sid Meier Civilization for RTS. Yeah, it was looking like computers were gonna dominate consoles, forcing them into extinction. While this was going on, an interesting controversy was growing in society. This is a copy of the packaging there was no rating on this game at all when the game was introduced. Small children bought this at Toys R Us. And Where many people, specifically boomers, thought gaming was demonic, leading to massive criticism on explicit slash violent video games. So the ESRB was established, an organization where after 1994, they started to rate video games. When you look at a lot of the old game boxes, there's literally no rating on it. So anyone could pick it up. Some of these logos I've never seen before in my life. As well in 1994, the PlayStation released and corrupting the lives of our loved ones. Yes, friends, I'm talking about this. A line for 3D graphics in their games, opting for CDs over ROM cartridges, making it a revolutionary console dominating the market. The Sega Saturn tried to compete, releasing months ahead of the PS1, having 3D graphics and all the advanced technology before every other big market console, but only saw success in Japan, getting overshadowed majorly in the US, with the release of the Nintendo 64 in 1996. As the PS1 and the N64 had exclusive titles over Sega, making them clear choices, from Crash Bandicoot, Spyro, Tekken, Mario, Zelda, Pokemon, it wasn't even a competition. Shockingly, the PlayStation dethroned Nintendo as the top console as the N64 limited itself, using cartridges only being able to hold 64 megabytes of data, compared to discs which could hold 650 megabytes, meaning PlayStation could have 10 times bigger games, more cutscenes, longer music, and highly detailed visuals. 
Dreamcast. Sega's last ditch effort to prevent them from losing the war. Sega's new Dreamcast, first home unit able to handle 128 computer bits of data at once. Twice as much as the Sony PlayStation and Nintendo 64 machines that dominate. Being the first console ever to have built-in internet connection. On paper, it should have succeeded, but got overshadowed by future releases at the start of the new century. Going into the, 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 the going into the 2000s is where everything changed for gaming. The PlayStation 2 released further expanding their dominance. Now being able to play movies, DVDs, and music CDs, it became more than just a video game system, making it the most sold console of all time. As back in the day, phones weren't as widespread. So most people were just pulling up the Blockbuster and renting out movies. Following that came the GameCube, the first Nintendo system to use custom-sized discs. Not really gaining the success Nintendo really wanted. Video games around this time were rapidly evolving. Graphic and design-wise, developers weren't scared to push what was possible. The ridiculous open world of Grand Theft Auto 3, Diablo 2 showing how RPGs should be designed, World of Warcraft being a virtual society people would spend more time in than the real one, and the Halo franchise single-handedly putting Microsoft's Xbox on the map. The Xbox is everything The Rock is, cutting edge powerful, exhilarating. Making them a contender in the console world, iconic games were coming out one after the other. The rapid growth of the video game industry continued with the release of the PlayStation 3, Wii, and Xbox 3. 60. With the internet becoming more publicly available, all these systems had the ability to connect to it. The Wii was arguably the most insane system at the time, taking a completely different path from the other two. Instead of focusing on high definition graphics, making everything look clean, motion detecting gameplay was the focus. With the creation of the Wii Remote, what you did physically within the real world was reflected in game. So games like Wii Sports and Wii Fitness became massive, incredibly popular to the masses as you were able to get a good workout while having fun at the comfort of your home. Grandmothers were playing this game. A billion IQ idea leading the Wii to become the most successful out of the three consoles. Plus Nintendo had a great monopoly on handheld devices with the Nintendo DS being a genius design with two screens and touchscreen. As console and PC gaming were dominating, another form of video game was quickly rising. Heading into the 2010s and onwards, phones became a lot more widespread. Nowadays, damn near everybody has one. With the introduction of the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store in 2008, apps were being made left and right. Some of the most famous titles being Angry Birds, Candy Crush Saga, Subway Surfers, Pokemon Go, Fruit Ninja, and many more. These apps weren't technological marvels, rather simple designs with easy to understand addicting gameplay. The biggest thing mobile games brought was a freemium model, allowing app developers to make tremendous amounts of money. The way it works is most apps are free and designed in a way where you're initially progressing very rapidly, hooking you into the gameplay. Then all of a sudden, the game gets really hard, which is when you're offered premium items to purchase, speeding up your progression. If you've played a mobile game, you've probably experienced this in some type of form, which is one of the reasons why they're insanely profitable, plus they don't cost a lot to make, while console and PC gaming went a completely different direction. Triple A gaming, aka games that have millions of dollars invested into them during marketing or development, became the norm, especially with the emergence of next gen consoles for PlayStation, Xbox, and Nintendo. This led to a flawed mentality where a lot of game publishers think the more money it costs to make a game, the more successful it will become, creating a massive risk where it has to succeed at insane levels, otherwise, it's a failure. Some did very well, like GTA V, which had over $200 million of budget, Call of Duty, MW2 of 250 spending hundreds of millions of dollars can work but in my opinion this caused the rise of the video game monetization from dlcs loot boxes cash shops and battle passes a lot of games are designed now for longevity to maximize profit hence why gta 6 hasn't come out yet reportedly having a two billion dollar budget i can't wrap around my head how that's even possible. Why rush GTA 6 when it's probably gonna kill GTA 5's popularity that still sells millions of copies to this day? Another side effect of AAA games was the rise of indie titles, created by small teams or even a single person with low amounts of money invested, such as Minecraft, Fortnite, Terraria, all starting out as small and then becoming some of the most popular games of all time. Proving you don't need tens of millions of dollars to make a successful game, an innovative idea can really carry. 
Which leads us into the current day situation where there's a growing opinion that gaming isn't fun or has gotten boring. And this has some truth to it. Just looking throughout the entire history, the rapid evolution has slowed down. As back in the day, every 10 years or new console was revolutionary. In my opinion, gaming itself isn't boring. It isn't titles still release every year like Elden Ring and God of War, but rather a lot of gamers have been playing for a long time and need a new type of stimulus that new graphics won't give them. For example, if you start playing video games for the first time this year, everything would feel amazing, fresh and new, being something you've never done before. Fast forward 10 years, if you're still doing the same thing, it's of course gonna get boring. Hence why a lot of experienced gamers of years under their belt are craving for something different to shake up the entire industry, which will probably be virtual reality, as that's vastly different from anything in gaming history. But time will reveal what happens. Thank you very much for watching, don't forget to subscribe for good luck, and check out this video next if you're interested in the insane history of MMOs. Peace.